Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and I'm just outside my door here in the Appalachian Mountains. Today's episode is going to be about the hummingbird moth. And it looks just like a hummingbird. I was so excited yesterday. I saw one come up to one of the flowers in our garden here. And I had been watching various butterfly species move in and out. And there came this clear wing hummingbird moth. And I was able to film it. And the lighting was just right. So I'm going to share that with you today. What will I cover in this video? Well, I'm going to, of course, break down its scientific name. I'll show you how to ID it and distinguish it from other moths in the same family. I'll talk about why it looks just like a hummingbird. Why does it mimic that? What, what was, what's the purpose of doing that? I'll talk a little bit about its natural history, where it lives, and what it feeds on as a larva. So stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. And here's to make this invasive. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes. Terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's. So, this particular species of hummingbird moth is in the sphinx moth or hawk moth family. And its scientific name is Hemaris thisbe. Hemaris Thisbe. Hemaris is a Greek word that refers to day because this moth, unlike other moths in this family, is active during the day. The second part of its name, Thisbe, dates back to Roman mythological literature and written just around single digits AD. The name Thisbe is one of the names of two lovers, Paramus and Thisbe, that are referred to as tragic lovers in this mythological story. According to this piece of literature, Thisbe found Paramus's bloody scarf, and in great grief, he took his own life by throwing himself on his sword. So the red uh, in the name Thisbe refers to the blood red color of this particular moth species. There are three similar species of hummingbird moths that at first glance appear to be very similar. Hemaris thisbe has an olive back, very thick fur on its thorax, and a rusty red-brown abdomen, and even a tail that looks like a hummingbird's tail. Its distinguishing feature that distinguishes it from the other two species is its pale or cream colored or white colored legs. So if you're trying to figure out the species, if you see these, look at the legs and that's the key feature. For example, the snowberry clearwing, Hemaris diffens, has very black or dark legs on it and also has a black line going through its eye and across its thorax. Hemaris thisbe looks just like a ruby-throated hummingbird in almost every way, in its coloration, its thick fur, the way it flies, the way it behaves, and even has the, the rusty brown tail like a ruby-throated hummingbird. So what advantage is it to look for this insect to look like a hummingbird? Is it coincidence or is it part of evolutionary forces that shaped what it looks like? Well, if you go back to the fact that this particular species moth is active during the day, it doesn't have the advantage of the secretive night cover and to be unseen by predators. So it's seen by predators. And what preys on insects? Well, things like assassin bugs and praying mantises are often found in flowers waiting for nectar feeders to come in. And the other birds are insectivores and will eat insects. So to other birds, this will appear as, a, as another bird and not so much as an insect to eat. And to insects, they're less likely to try to tackle a bird than another insect. So scientists believe that this mimicry gave this insect an advantage and because it looks so much and acts so much like a hummingbird, it can move around with impunity. This is one of the most 
fun insects to watch and I just can't help but look at it and think how much it looks like a hummingbird. In fact, they're often mistaken for hummingbirds and people have to do a double take. They'll even buzz past your head going from flower to flower just like a hummingbird and sound like a hummingbird. They're one of the few organisms that can hover in place. There are nectar feeding bats, there's the hummingbirds, and there's these clear wing moths that can hover in place. The advantage of that for this species too is it doesn't contact the flower where many of these insect predators like the assassin bugs and the praying mantises are. It moves so fast, it's in constant motion, its metabolism must be so high. Its wings beat at up to 70 times per second. And originally, when this moth came out of its chrysalis, its wings had color on it and scales on it, like other butterfly wings. But it beats those wings so fast, they've all been thrown and knocked off, so it appears to have clear wings, which of course give it its name, other name, the clear wing moth. Looking around in the literature, I think that arguably this moth may be one of the fastest insects. And I saw reports of it being estimated to fly at up to 30 miles per hour. So it's really cool to watch this moth acting like a hummingbird, doing so many of the same behaviors. And when it stretches out its long straw-like tongue to put into a flower and suck out some of that nectar, it really looks like a hummingbird. Life cycle wise, in the north, it'll go through one generation per year. In the south, it'll go through two generations. Feeds on cherry trees, hawthorn, honeysuckle, snowberry, dogbane, and some other leaves. It doesn't, however, feed on garden plants. And sometimes it's mistaken for either the tobacco hornworm or the tomato hornworm, which is a bane to gardeners, because its caterpillar has that distinctive horn at the base of its long abdomen. After feeding, the larva drops to the ground, spins a light cocoon, and pupates inside that cocoon, will overwinter that way, or if it's a southern species, will emerge from that cocoon, hidden on the ground, perhaps in leaf litter, when it's ready to come out. These hummingbird moths are found throughout North America, three different species in North America, and they're also found around the world. So thank you for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door. I hope you enjoyed learning about and seeing this clear wing moth as much as I did. Next time you go to a butterfly garden or see a lot of flowers, stop by and just watch and see what comes in and out. And I'm sure you'll be lucky enough to see a clear wing moth as well. Remember, I love interacting with my viewers. Please subscribe to my channel. If you like what I do, leave a comment and let me know what you've seen or share with our learning community here. I'll try to get back to you within 24 to 48 hours if you leave me a comment, unless I'm out in the woods or on a multiple day hike where I'm away from the internet. Thanks for watching Nature at Your Door.